Please be seated. Miss Mary Jo Griffin, Chairperson of the School Committee. Miss Kathy Forney, President of the PTO. Mr. George Simonian, our guest speaker. Dr. Richard Moser, Superintendent. Mr. Bernie DeNatalie, Director of Technology. Mr. Robert Cruikshank, Business Manager. Deans Bernard Battle, Jeffrey Doherty, and Alan Thomas. Class Advisors, Ms. Heather Callaghan and Ms. Maura Devaney. Dedicated faculty, distinguished town officials, proud parents, grandparents, family members, and friends, I welcome you to our commencement ceremony for our Chelmsford High School class of 2000. These young adults, today addressed in maroon and white caps and gowns, have continued to define themselves and their class since they began their formal education in September of 1987 as kindergartners. Yet we all know that each of these fine young ladies and men really began their self-study in infancy under the guidance of their parents and family. I have known one member of this class since she breathed her first breath and spoke her first word, and through Amy's friendship and activities had the pleasure of becoming closely acquainted with many of this year's graduates. I can recall meeting them on their first visit to the high school as eighth graders and challenging them to be more than a class of double zeros. And during their entire four years, they became a fascination among faculty, parents, and community for well, they were the last class of the 20th century, the first class to leave Chelmsford High School and begin their next stage of lifelong learning in the new millennium. They will always be the class of 2000. I can state with much honesty, this is indeed a class of individuals, individuals who understand the importance of achievement through cooperation and teamwork, but also students who treasure their individuality and refuse to be defined by any one label. As individuals working together with their class advisors, Ms. Heather Callaghan and Ms. Maura Devaney, the class of 2000 has continued our school's tradition of academic excellence, impressive community spirit, and achievements in athletics, in school activities, and within the world of work. This class boasts three merit finalists, 16 commended scholars. 
this class is the first in many years to have among its members two scholar athletes, Andrea Lee and Michael Krukchank. You can applaud. During this senior year alone, the school's orchestra achieved a gold medal and played at Tanglewood. Our student musical received deserved acclaim for its production of West Side Story. 19 athletic teams qualified for state tournaments. Nine were MVC champs. Our calculus team was first in New England, third in the nation. Our computer team to compete in national competition. Our TV club won an award for outstanding sports coverage. Over 20 students won recognition in the state DECA competition. And our school's student council won state recognition. This class has produced a professional school newspaper under editor-in-chief Sachin Nene, and a beautiful yearbook under Editor-in-Chief Ingrid Skoog. This is the class that also convinced me to offer as a prize my parking space for one month, thinking they were behind in their magazine sales fundraiser, only to learn that they had miscalculated and had far exceeded their fundraising goal. I think it was Joe Reddy that took that space. <laughs> this is the class that showed it could really dance on stage and in the overheated calves, with Patrick O'Shaughnessy cutting up the floor with his Irish step dancing. <laughs> this is the class who chose as their leaders Vula Canavis as treasurer, Margaret Maloney as secretary. <laughs> Margaret was also Girl Student of the Year. <laughs> Ethan Cushing as vice president. <laughs> Ethan also won honors as Mr. CHS. <laughs> and last but not least, Sui Yu as its president. This is the class that sent Nate McKinnon, the announcer, the morning announcer, good morning CHS, and Joe Reddy to the State Board of Education to be a voice of reason and to let them know how best to improve student learning, the Chelmsford way. <laughs> this is the class of many talented artists, including William Ho, Boy Student of the Year. This is a class of several Girl Scout Gold Award recipients and Eagle Scouts. This is a class whose many members have donated their time and talents to build houses and provide food and money for the less fortunate. This is the class who had distinguished itself this week as the most mature, polite group of young people that have ever been served at the Marriott Long Wharf and at the Andover Country Club. The class of 2000 has so many talented individuals, too many to recognize by name, but also varied in their interest and in their personalities. This class also too early in life, experienced the loss of one of its members, Nicole McTie. In honor of Nicole, Mc, Nicole McTie, I ask that we observe a moment of silence.
I also ask all in attendance today to listen carefully to the wisdom of our valedictorian and salutatorian, to peruse the program and note the students who are members of our National Honor Society and those who have earned scholarships. But please know that there are others whose accomplishments are yet to be. And trust me, each of the 348 members of the class of 2000 will continue to discover talents which we, they will then dedicate in service to others, for that's the kind of individuals they are. To the members of the class of 2000, I ask you to never lose sight of your roots as well as your goals and continue to use your gifts in service to future generations. The town of Chelmsford, and in particular, your parents and the educators you have worked with during your 13 years of formal learning have demonstrated their commitment to your future success by providing you with an exceptional education. In pursuing your dreams, may you, the members of the class of 2000, pay special tribute to your families, educators, and citizens of Chelmsford by creating a legacy of justice, integrity, and harmony by which your generation will be defined. Thank you. And now to begin our program, I call to the stage a young woman who joined the Chelmsford school system from Norway, a scholar and a humanitarian a uh, salu salutatorian, Ingrid Roderick. When I first saw Ingrid Roderick, I was in sixth grade. To me, Ingrid seemed like an exotic personage from across the ocean. She had just moved from Norway. I was in awe of the fact that she had lived in another country and spoke another language, and I hoped to get to know her. It wasn't until our freshman year, however, that we really met. The following summer, we co-taught a vacation Bible school class in Belmont. From acting out the story of Elisha with our third and fourth graders, to dancing the hokey pokey at a shell station, I was introduced to the funny, energetic, wise, and sensitive person that Ingrid is. Ingrid's culture continues to be a special part of who she is, but I've learned that she is special in many other ways, too. Leading the after-school Bible study, taking a flute lesson, dining out with friends, learning to swing dance, rock climbing, studying realism, conducting a chemistry experiment, baking for the French Honor Society, emailing friends at college. Ingrid's busy schedule gives us a peek into how she spends her time, but it does not reveal the real essence of who Ingrid is. In all settings, from the band room to Bible study, Ingrid is full of ideas and always eager to talk. But also, as a natural leader, she is skilled at drawing out the talents and abilities of others. In class, Ingrid asks questions until she possesses a thorough understanding and then does her best to clarify the concept for others. Ingrid's desire to communicate fosters her love for languages. Glad for an opportunity to speak her beloved Norwegian, Ingrid sought out a student at CHS who had just moved from Oslo. The summer after our sophomore year, Ingrid and I traveled to Haiti on a teen missions trip. While there, Ingrid's French enabled her to bridge the language barrier between English and Creole in order to ask the construction foreman how they needed us to help. She attentively listened as the Haitians repeated the word sab over and over until finally she remembered sable, the French word for sand, and understood that they were asking us to carry more sand to make cement. People are a priority for Ingrid. 
She is honest, sincere, and open about the high and low points in her life, and she expects her friends to be too. When Ingrid asks, as she does daily, how are you doing, she really wants to know. Her ready hospitality, use the back door, come whenever you're ready. If you're hungry, help yourself to something to eat, conveys her desire to be available to her friends. Church youth groups, a Christian discipleship group, retreats, morning worship, and personal Bible study each contribute to Ingrid's list of activities. I mean, each contribute to her um, spiritual life, but, they're much more, but her spiritual life is much more than just a list of activities. Her faith directly influences her day-to-day -day outlook and her life. For example, as she struggles to know how much time to devote to schoolwork compared to how much to devote to others, she turns to God for wisdom. Ingrid's eagerness to communicate her faith, her love of people, culture, and language, and her intelligent, motivated nature all contribute to her ambitious visions for her future. A possible pursuit of hers is to be a full-time missionary. She can envision herself as an administrator of a university in Haiti, or a, civil, or a civil engineer providing a reliable water supply for a village in a third world country. As her classmate and friend, I am honored and pleased to introduce Ingrid Roderick as salutatorian of the Chelmsford High School class of 2000. Thank you. Um, that was Julia Hazel, <laughs> by the way. Good evening, family, friends, administrators, faculty, and class of 2000. This ceremony is called commencement, which is a word that means not closure or end, but means beginning. Whether we have excelled or failed at most of what we have done in high school, Today can be the beginning of a wonderful life for every one of us. I am, impressed, I am impressed with what members of our class have done during high school. We have written insightful essays. We have drawn innovative portraits. We have endured rigorous weight training. We have won musical competitions. We have given rides to the sick. We have been loyal friends. We have set aside regular time for our families. Let us only remember not to stop here. High school is an important time in life, but it is not all of life. Let us make this point in our lives the beginning of more worthy pursuits, so that in 20 years we will be thankful to have experienced high school, but also thankful to have lived those 20 years following graduation. However, for some, high school has not been an encouraging or successful experience. We may have felt lonely. We may have failed several classes or never really have understood what our teachers were trying to teach us. We may have felt clumsy, stupid, or untalented. Maybe we have just been trying to cope with all the turmoil around us. Thankfully, this is only the beginning, and we, have, we each have a whole life ahead of us. Let me share Abraham Lincoln's road to his influential presidency. He failed in business. He was defeated for the legislature. He failed in business once more. He suffered a nervous breakdown. Then he was defeated for speaker, for elector, for congressman, for senator, for vice president, and again for senator. And then finally, in 1860, he was elected president. And what a difference that man made. The past does have consequences, but it's certainly never dooms us to misery or failure for the rest of our lives. I personally find great hope in daily new beginnings. I fail in many ways each day, but God unconditionally forgives even the most serious things I do wrong and helps me to make more of the present than I have made of the past. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul writes the following about reaching his life goal. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, 
Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal. God's forgiveness allowed him not to be burdened by the past, but to move on and make the most of the present. Graduation is a good opportunity to refocus and start making the most of our time, but graduation comes around seldom. So not just at graduation, but in each day of our lives, let us make our successes starting points of more successes and our failures turning points towards meaningful endeavors. And wherever we find ourselves in life, God can make the present the beginning of something great. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to do, introduce a young man who has helped the class of 2000 through a remarkably successful senior year. The president of the class of 2000, Sui Yu. Uh, before I give my spiel, I'd like to present to Mr. Maidao with the class gift. This year, the class of 2000 decided to donate decided to um, renovate the front lawn, which has uh, often been trampled upon. So we're going to redecorate it into a remarkable, like, welcome area. So, smile up. <laughs> On behalf of the faculty and students at Chelmsford High School, I gladly receive this gift and it will be a long-lasting memory of a class that has always tried to make Chelmsford High School the most comfortable and beautiful place for all of us to learn. Thank you, Sui. I had this cute little intro for my speech all prepared and carefully thought out here. But I'm gonna be on the spontaneous side today and um, go in a different direction. Because as I stand in front of all my classmates today, it's finally dawned on me that this could very well be the last time the, all the members of the class of 2000 are together in one room. So if you guys don't mind, I would like to take a picture of you guys right now. <laughs> thanks a lot. Oh yeah, Siobhan, thanks for the idea. I have a confession to make to all of you right now. I really hate having to deliver this speech right now. But it's probably not for the reasons you think. I don't have that many butterflies, a nervous bladder, that much trouble enunciating my words, although Vula would say otherwise, but that's a different story. Or anything like that. No, I hate having to give this speech right now because it symbolizes an ending. An ending to the illustrious careers of CHS's class of 2000. The class of 2000 has been a class that has been placed under stricter scrutiny than any other class. Not only have we had to pass the high expectations of previous classes, we have also had to shoulder the extra burden of representing such a unique year. Now, I know many of you think it's so glamorous to be part of the millennial class, and for the most part, it's not bad. But guess who was the guinea pig to have to take the then experimental test, MCAS? Yep, that was us, 2000. And thanks to the high level of concentration we used to take the test, the MCAS has become a perfect exam loved by everyone. <laughs> In all seriousness though, we have been under a spotlight ever since we entered the school system. However, we have not withered under the pressure or the spotlight. On the contrary, we have thrived and surpassed all the expectations. We have become pace setters and pioneers, building new paths for future classes to follow to success. The accomplishments of the class of 2000 are numerous and wide, and it would take me another couple hours to get through them all. And I can see everyone dozing off and shifting in their chairs, so I'll spare you guys. But one achievement cannot go unnoticed. That is a tremendous effort put out by so many to create the best spirit week ever at CHS. 
The effort started in October as the class reps and officers planned a strategy that would make Spirit Week a memorable one. Using the millennial theme, many worked long hours to paint, draw, and create a masterpiece. Special kudos go out to Katie Fleming, Jeff Lanless, and Will Ho, chief architects. The, our chief artists who uh, guide us through the entire project and uh, didn't hurt our feelings when they would do something that was just butt ugly. So. The real success of Spirit Week, though, was a magnificent pep rally. Working through the night, literally, a spectacular light show was created, thanks to Dan Sylvia, which further demonstrated how the class of 2000 was willing to go the extra mile. What made the pep rally so special, though, was the overwhelming spirit exuded by all the members of the class of 2000. As I watched every individual in front of me scream and holler and give it their all, I couldn't help but smile and realize that our class was one unified machine. All the petty differences that separated us were gone. We were one class with one mission. And of course, we succeeded in our quest, just like every other quest we went out to conquer. As talented as we are, our class couldn't have reached our full potential without the help of many. First, the administration of CHS has been more than supportive of all the activities and plans we have set out to accomplish. Mr. Mydell and the three deans have always been there to lend a helping hand, provide guidance and advice, and give an occasional stern lecture on the moments when we slip off the road of righteousness. The class advisors, Mrs. Callaghan and Mrs. Devaney, also deserve a touch pat on the back for the incredible amount of work they've done for the class. Ever the perfectionist, these two young ladies have donated basically their lives for the last four years to ensure that this class had the best senior week possible. Their dedication to the class of 2000 is unparalleled. Finally, I want to thank these, these special people who have held our hands throughout life and never get the credit they deserve, our parents. Although we may not always be on the same page, moms and dads, you have always been there for us, taking us out to our first little league game taking us to our ballet lesson, taking us to our recital, helping us with our algebra homework. You put up with all our antics, and for that, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I would like all the members of Class of 2000 to give all these people a standing ovation for what they've done. I have to sit back down now. I gotta finish this thing. All right. Personally, I wanna thank my three officers. The independent, straight shooting, always giving you a piece of her mind, treasure of Blue Cannabis. <laughs> the warm, sensitive, always ready to give you a big hug, Secretary Margaret Maloney. <laughs> In a spontaneous, sometimes bizarre, but always speaking from his heart, Vice President Ethan Cushing. You guys have really made this year special, and I couldn't imagine working with a better group of people. Your leadership and hard work can be easily seen in many of the records you helped the class of 2000 set, including setting a new fundraising record for the magazine drive. You have lots to be proud of. So, class of 2000, let us continue to strive for excellence in all our future endeavors. There are many opportunities out there for all of us to make a positive impact on this world. Don't be afraid to make bold changes that go against the norm. Think different. That's the key to innovation. Always be involved in your communities and make a difference in someone else's life, just like CHS has made a difference in ours. Above all, always remember who you are. Be true to yourself and don't pretend to be anyone else. We've had one great ride, guys. I'm thankful to have been able to serve as your class president. Gonna miss you guys. It's been good. Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this time, I'd like to present the class president of 2001, my friend Doug Wakefield. This is the gavel symbolizing the transfer of power. So, there you go. Um, 
first of all, to uh, Sui, Vula, Margaret, and Ethan. I don't know, wherever you guys are. I just want to let you know that I don't think I could have picked a better group of individuals to model myself after. The dedication that you put in this year was just incredible. And uh, if I can do even half as good a job as you four did, then I think the class of 2001 will have a great senior year to look forward to. As for the class of 2000, it's been such a privilege to spend the last three years under you. You're such a talented and diverse group of people. And you've truly served as an in inspiration for myself and the class of 2001. I'd like to wish you all the best of luck in the future, and I hope some of you next year decide to stop by and let us know how we're doing. Thank you. I now am pleased to introduce an educational leader who is the architect of the Chumsford School System for today and into the future. He works continually to provide the best opportunities for which all students are under which all students can learn. It is my pleasure to introduce my colleague and mentor, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Richard Moser. Thank you very much. I'd like to offer my own personal congratulations to this, uh, this class of 2000. All the speeches so far and all the fine things that have been said are all true, and uh, we're very proud to be with you for the last four years, actually the last 13 years. It's also my honor today to uh, introduce uh, our speaker for the graduating class of 2000, and that's George Simonian. While this is an honor and certainly a pleasure, uh, I also uh, introduce uh, Mr. Simonian with a sense of because I've watched Mr. Simonian over the last nine years introduce 89 people in the Hall of Fame uh, honoring re reception and dinner, and all of his in introductions are always uh, very uh, complete, very professional, very personal, and uh, I hope I can provide the same kind of opportunity for George this evening. Everybody knows George, uh, but not everybody knows everything about George. George was born in Lowell, I lived in the Highlands area, and he attended Lowell High School and graduated with the class of 1945. While at high school, he excelled academically in the field of science, as well as other academic subjects. He was a track star, and he achieved a level of Eagle, Stout, Eagle Scout Silver Palm with the Boy Scouts of America. He also participated in many other activities uh, through his high school experience in Lowell, not unlike all of the activities that he's tried to organize and foster for all the students of Chelmsford when he was principal of our school. After graduating from high school in uh, 1945, he went off to Trinity College where he uh, majored in uh, pre-med pre and received his Bachelor of Science degree. He continued his education uh, at Boston College, uh, earning a Master's of Arts degree in secondary education, which was the beginning of his commitment to education. Over the years, Mr. Simonian uh, has taken other graduate courses at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, Salem State University, University of Colorado, Boston University, and Harvard University. For 10 years, between 1952 and 1962, uh, George participated in active and reserve military, military duty and achieved the rank of captain of the US Air Force. His professional career in education I've learned through reading his resume, uh, began as a substitute teacher in the Lowell Public Schools. The following year, he began his full-time teaching career uh, in Peekskill, New York, as a biology and math teacher. He also coached football, basketball, and baseball. He came to Chelmsford High School as a biology teacher in 1957. Through his career, he was head of the science department. He was our athletic director. He was president of the Chelmsford High School Faculty Association, and in 1965, for four years, he served as the K-12 Science Coordinator, which grew into another post called the Director of Curriculum for the following four years. For 15 years, from 1973 through 1988, Mr. Simonian uh, was principal of Chelmsford High School. He's responsible for many initiatives and many programs, but the house plan is probably uh, the most single significant contribution that's been modeled throughout other high schools in the United States and beyond the borders of the United States. 
He also initiated uh, a number of international education opportunities where students from foreign lands have come to uh, Chelmsford and continue to come to Chelmsford to take advantage of our education and enrich our lives. And he's also provided opportunities for many high school students in Chelmsford to go overseas to receive an education for a short period of time and wonderful programs. He focused on athletics and uh, academics over the time period that he was principal of uh, uh, Chelmsford High School. And I think the, the fine program that we have today in both our academic work and in athletics as a result of the foundation that Mr. Simonian started uh, a number of years ago. He's an active member of our community. Uh, he was a Rotarian. He's a member of the Finance Committee for one year. He's always an active member of his church. He's been the executive director of the Alumni Association. He's the co-founder of the Hall of Fame for Chelmsford High School, which has been operating in the last nine years. And more recently, uh, he's supported an initiative to upgrade the McCarthy Fields in honor of Carl Olson. George has an impressive resume marked with a unique commitment to Chelmsford High School and the town of Chelmsford. He has served as a model for a commitment to our community, a life of service to other people, dedication to the growth and welfare of our, welfare of our students, and he has always been committed to his family as well as received support from his family, his wife Lucy, his daughter Lucy Ann, his son and daughter-in-law Kirk and Jennifer, his daughter and son-in-law, uh, Alyssa and Mark, and you need to know as well that the selection of Mr. Simonian uh, is not only a function of his resume and his fine experience and commitment to Chelmsford, but the student council every year uh, makes a choice of who the uh, speaker is going to be. Uh, one female member of the student council when asked this year as to why they chose uh, Mr. Simonian as the guest speaker, said, well, that's very simple. He just happens to be very cute. I don't know whether George knows that or not, but uh, clearly George has it all and he's done it all. But from my perspective, uh, the student council should be congratulated for their choice. George's dedication to the youth of our community is unparalleled. He has a lifetime of doing what is best for children. He has helped hundreds of our students become the best that they can be. And I am confident that his speech today will be filled with valuable words of guidance for our graduating class. Please help me in welcoming George Simonian. Members of the class of 2000, Ms. Griffin, Dr. Moser, Mr. Meidel, Mr. Battle, Mr. Doherty, Mr. Thomas, Mrs. Forney, members of the faculty, parents, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start with my message, I would like to thank this fine group of young men and women for inviting me to be their graduation speaker. This is a first for me. This is an honor that I will always remember, and I thank you all for that. Tonight, I would like to talk about the past and then about the future, because they are related. One ties to the other. I first came to work at Chelmsford High School way back in March of 1957. That's a long time ago, and it didn't take too long for me to realize that CHS was something very, very special. And it is very, very special. What makes it so special? What is Chelmsford High School anyway? Chelmsford High School is basically three things. It is a building, it is people, and it is tradition. The first consolidated Chelmsford High School opens its doors in 1917. That Chempson High School was on Bill Ricker Road, and it served until 1959. That building is now the town offices. I would venture to say there are probably some folks here tonight that went to that Chempson High School. Then from 1959 till 1974, 
Chelmsford High School was on North Road. We now call that building the McCarthy Middle School. I would venture to say that there are many people here tonight that went to that Chelmsford High School as students. And many are here tonight who were teachers at that Chelmsford High School. And then in 1974, a new Chelmsford High School came on the scene, the present high school on Richardson Road. I guess I'm probably one of the few left that worked in all three of those Chelmsford High Schools. Chelmsford High School is also people, all kinds of people, teachers, nurses, administrators, custodians, food service workers, guidance counselors, secretaries, support personnel, librarians, specialists, and above all, students. Everyone working together to create an educational environment that's alive with learning through the classrooms and in social, athletic, and extracurricular activities. People called Chelmsford High School make this all happen. Chelmsford High School is also tradition. Tradition for excellence, tradition for success, tradition for giving. All of the programs and all of the people involved in those programs have one goal in mind, provide the absolute best in time, in materials, and knowledge. Back in my day, any new program would not get started unless I could be assured that everything was going to be done in order that that program excel. And that philosophy still holds today. For years, Chelmsford High School has set the standard high, and I fervently hope that this tradition continues. Excellence breeds excellence. Success breeds success. Not only are all of the educational programs highly successful, but all of, but all of the individuals involved in each and every one of those programs enjoy success. And that success follows into the future. Over the years, I've had the good fortune of hearing about and following the careers of many of our alumni, all of them success stories. Let me mention just a few of them. Astrophysicists, corporate lawyers, stonemasons, oncologists, college professors, environmentalists, town clerks, university presidents, building contractors, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, firefighters, brain surgeons, military leaders, classroom teachers and administrators, nurses, bankers, Broadway stage performers, inventors, research scientists, playwrights, Hollywood personnel, computer technology pioneers, journalists, writers and poets, prime time television performers, every type of engineer conceivable, space shuttle launch officers, elected officials, clergymen, public servants, police officers, and thousands upon thousands of highly successful, honest-to-goodness citizens. The tradition of, alive, of giving is alive and healthy at CHS. Community service, outreach to the senior citizens, blood mobiles, Santa drives, Staff Appreciation Day, the 24-hour relay, the Thomas Jefferson Forum, fundraising for this or for that, all in the name of giving. The president of the class of 1974, Bill Cohane, had a vision of establishing a Chelmsford High School Alumni Association. And in 1989, with the help of a group of alumni and an old retired principal, the association got its start. Its major purpose is to foster a spirit of fellowship and affiliation among the alumni, to unify more closely the alumni by class, to promote alumni activities, and develop a spirit of cooperation between the association and the high school. In 11 short years, the association has over 1,800 dues-paying members from all over the world. The association publishes a news magazine three times a year that keeps members, of, members abreast of all alumni association activities, all class activities, and current high school activities. The association established the Hall of Fame in 1991 to honor alumni who excelled while in high school and or in their profession and or in their community. 
and also former high school teachers and administrators who created and promoted excellence while at CHS. To this day, 90 most worthy individuals have been inducted, and there are literally hundreds more out there that will be inducted in the future. The Alumni Association's Endowment Fund has grown steadily with generous contributions from alumni remembering loved ones, alumni remembering classmates, graduating classes since 1994, giving back in the form of scholarships to help future alumni with college expenses, all in the name of giving back. Alumni coming back to CHS to teach and coach. Gail Safaris, class of 1965. Jim Durkin, class of 1967. Jack Fletcher, class of 1968. Sandy Johnson Taylor, class of 1969. Cheryl Dapple Ziva, class of 1970. Ann O'Sullivan O'Brien, class of 1971. Bruce Rich, class of 1973. Debbie Haywood, class of 1974. Joan Amaralt Murphy, class of 1979. Charlie Mickle, class of 1983. Bob Russo, class of 1983. Don Benson, class of 1984. Tom Gallagher, class of 1987. Mike O'Keefe, class of 1987. Kristen Morris Thomas, class of 1987. Maura Devaney, one of your advisors, class of 1988. Mark Branco, class of 1989. Chris Chu, class of 1990. Kevin Branco, class of 1992. Barry Morgan, class of 1992. And Jennifer Ferrin, class of 1993. This is also called giving back. And it's been going on since I can remember. And it's a beautiful tradition. So you see, Chempson High School is a building. It is people. And it is a tradition. For the past four years, you have walked the halls, studied in the classrooms, played in the gymnasium and athletic fields, read and studied in the library, ate and socialized in the dining rooms, all in the building called Chumpsford High School. For the past four years, you as individuals and as a group have been Chumpsford High School. And for the past four years, you have contributed to and enhanced the traditions that are Chelmsford High School. And what could be better than that? And so where do we go from here? We move right into the future, your future. Chelmsford High School has prepared you well, but your future is in your hands. Most of you will be continuing your education. Others will enter the world of work. Some will pursue the military. But whatever path you follow into the future, I am sure that your professional and occupational life will be very successful. But what about your personal life? Let me make some suggestions. Don't live your life alone. Don't be a closet case. Be with people you love and with people that love you. Write a letter. Make a phone call. Send an email. Hug a friend. Kiss your mom. Tell your father he's the greatest. Be good to this planet. Conserve, recycle, respect it. It's the only one we have, and it's the human thing to do. Be good to your community, whether it's Chempsford or wherever you settle. Get involved, volunteer, work in a soup kitchen or in a shelter. Be a big brother, big sister. Run for public office. Be a participant, not a bystander. Be good to your family, your present one, and then to your future one. Be good to your kids. They are going to need your love, your time, your good ear, your respect, and your understanding. Be good to yourselves. Respect your mind and your body. It's the only one you get. Take good care of it. At Chempson High School, you learned in the classroom. Out there, the classroom is everywhere. Keep your eyes and ears open and enjoy every minute. So in closing, I would like to wish all of you much success, good health, and an abundance of happiness. This has been an extreme pleasure for me to be here, and I thank you all for that.
May God bless you all. Thank you, class of 2000. Having worked with you, George, as a teacher during your principalship, I'm not surprised by the inspirational speech that you've just delivered to this very unique class. And now it's my pleasure to make you an honorary member of the class of 2000 and hand you your diploma. Thank you. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you a true lover of learning, a Renaissance woman for the new millennium, our valedictorian, Rachel Fichtenbaum. To say a few words about Rachel Christina Hamill. When I first met Rachel, she was the person who always got 100 on a math test. Now I know her as a sweet, brilliant, caring friend who often puts a humorous twist on an idea. Her lack of height has not prevented her from entering others' lives, though through theater, voice production, math team, and regular classes. None of us shall ever forget her. Class of 2000, I present our valedictorian, Rachel Fichtenbaum. <laughs> Flipping through the newspaper this morning, I saw a coupon for cake flour. Cake sounded good, so I went to the supermarket and bought the flour. I also picked up some sugar, some baking powder, a gallon of milk, a carton of eggs, some salt, and a tub of butter. Tomorrow, mix those ingredients together and bake them into a cake. My, tri my trip to the market made me think of high school. Each lesson we have learned is an ingredient. It is up to us to use those ingredients to bake our cakes. Starting this evening, we can all, if we choose, begin the mixing. Those ingredients that we have from CHS could hardly be of better quality. We have learned more than most of us realize, more than most of us can fathom. We have learned from the classroom, whether studying algebra or calculus, whether memorizing the parts of speech or Latin verb declensions, whether writing a topic sentence or the great American novel. Although no two of us have had exactly the same experiences over the last four years, we have all stretched our minds and we have all learned. We have learned material that will stay with us for as long as we live. But have we grown academically only? No. Whether in the science laboratory or on the soccer field, we have learned both to challenge ourselves individually and to work in teams. We have developed time management skills and have learned to prioritize. Many of us are far too familiar with that ever-present question, to sleep or not to sleep. After four years together, we have learned to get along with each other and unfortunately, sometimes without each other. And by reflecting throughout the four years, on our own actions and reactions, we have learned to know ourselves better. Despite the value of these lessons, they will be meaningless if we fail to apply them well. Ingredients without a chef do not form a cake. 
We must not let the butter melt, the milk spoil, the eggs rot. So too can knowledge be used harmfully. Over 25 years ago, a principal wrote a memo to his teachers to emphasize this point. He wrote as follows. Dear teacher, I am a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no man should witness. Gas chambers built by learned engineers. Children poisoned by educated physicians. Infants by trained nurses. Women and babies shot and burned by high school and college graduates. So, I am suspicious of education. My request is, help your students become human. Your efforts must never produce learned monsters, skilled psychopaths, educated Eichmanns. Reading, writing, arithmetic are important only if they serve to make our children more humane. This memo was originally addressed to teachers, but we as students can also take it to heart, especially at this time in our lives. All of us here have the potential for success, the ingredients for wholesome and tasty cakes, and the abilities to mix and to bake. We must begin preparing those cakes tonight. But how can we be sure that our cakes will not be too small nor too big, not too dry nor too wet, not too soft nor too hard, in other words, just right, good enough to suit Goldilocks. To be successful, we must keep our minds open to new ideas. We must continue to learn, no matter how much we already know or how old we grow. We must seek out and confront new challenges. We must take time to reflect on our own lives and on world events, and we must act on our beliefs, on our thoughts. We must try not to be afraid of following our values and our hearts, for though they may lead us to hardship, they alone can lead us to truth. Most importantly, we must always leave time for ourselves, time to think, time to be alone, time to spend with friends and family. These days especially, we must guard against stress. We must try our best to keep both our disappointments and our successes in, pers in perspective. No single disappointment spells ultimate ruin. No single lifestyle is perfect. No single talent is ideal. As author and playwright James Matthew Barry once said to H.G. Wells, it is all very well to be able to write books, but can you waggle your ears? Today is a momentous day for all of us. Why? This ceremony signifies the end of four years of high school and the end of 12 to 14 years of academics. But more importantly, today is also a beginning. Just like our symbolic cakes, our lives have the potential to be wholesome and successful, but it is our own responsibility to make them that way. While family and friends will continue to support us and encourage us, they will no longer lead us. Tonight, we become the chefs. Thank you. Educating our youth in Chelmsford is a partnership of dedicated efforts. The presence of so many faculty on stage tonight represents the strong commitment of our talented faculty, along with our deans, Al Thomas, Jeff Doherty, and Bernie Battle, and your principal, towards the future success of the class of 2000. In addition to our faculty and administration, our school committee supports the best opportunities for all students to be prepared to enter the world of tomorrow. In Chelmsford, we are fortunate to have a school committee made up of five individuals who are dedicated to providing the best that public education can offer. I now ask you to give a warm welcome 
to the newly elected chairperson of our school committee, Ms. Mary Jo Griffin. To the parents and graduates of the class of 2000, on behalf of the Chelmsford School Committee, congratulations on the completion of this journey. It is a journey that began on that first day of kindergarten when you came into school with that goofy lunchbox, all wide-eyed and, and excited, and any fear you might, or apprehension you may have had dissolved when you came face to face with the loving smile of a Mrs. Reddy or a Mrs. Winterson. And you soared through grammar school, where you thrived with a little help from a Miss Evans or a Miss Durant, Miss Kilcoin, or Mrs. Deneen, or Mrs. Byam, just to name a few. Then into middle school you went, attitude and all. And though you might not have known it, you were impossible. But a Mr. Bennett or a Mr. Hintz helped keep you in line, while the enthusiasm of a Mr. Hunt, or maybe the humor of a Mr. Tanner? Or was it the musical motivation of a Mrs. Miller that once again inspired you to flourish? Then finally, with all nine years of experience under your belt, you entered Chelmsford High School. You were definitely ready. You were definitely cool. Until Mr. Dangle's class, or was it Mrs. Queenan's? Or was it the grueling practices imposed by Coach Fletcher or Coach Devaney? Or the never-ending rehearsals of Mr. Kerouac that posed the most challenge? But again, you achieved, and it was under the watchful eye of either Mr. Battle, Mr. Doherty, Mr. Thomas, and of course, Mr. Meidel. So you see, tonight is about a 13-year journey that included an array of people that make up the Chelmsford school system, as well as the people of the entire town of Chelmsford that have so generously supported you and your schools. They all came together, a community at work with one goal, your future and what you need to succeed when you leave here tonight. They have all had the privilege of partaking in the development of the fine young men and women you are. And now, along with all the lessons you've learned and the wisdom you've received or are about to receive, I would like to offer one more. It was the advice that the late Franklin D. Roosevelt gave his own son. He said, when giving a speech, remember three things. Be sincere, be brief, and be seated. To emphasize the importance of parents and the achievements symbolized by a diploma from Chelmsford High School, each year we ask a member of the executive board of our high school PTO to assist in the handing out of diplomas. This year, Kathy Forney, president of the Chelmsford High PTO, will be assisting. And now, the moment you all have been patiently waiting for, the conferring of diplomas. And now, the conferring of the diplomas for the class of 2000. <laughs> 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 
Nicole Marie Atchison. Amanda Emma Allen. Michelle Margaret Baker. Amy Elizabeth Call. Amy Catherine Clark. Emma Francis Camo. Mary Alice Caraccio. Amanda Lee Costa. Devin Kathleen Curran. Caitlin Mary Daly. Serena Marie De Felice. Teresa Marie Donegan. Christina Lynn Dugan. Lisa Marie DuPont. Sarah Patricia Ellsworth. Jamie Lynn Fraser. Christina Marie George. Jeanette Lillian Gill. Laura Ann Grasso. Jillian Kathleen Hines. Bula Canavas. Kristen Lee Lavalley. Kathleen Henley Long. Kerry Ann Lucas. Stephanie Ann Magnet. Lai Yi and Lisa Mack. Megan Jill Maloney. Shannon Kathleen Martin. Philippa Claire McLaughlin. Jennifer Servadad Mead. Michelle Annie Meehan. Christiana Elizabeth Merriwell. Lillian Ruel Mongeau. Andrea Sophia Nadoni. Jessica Lee Nelson. Tara Lee O'Connor. Kristen Elizabeth Olson. Lindsay Marie Patterson. Janelle Marie Pelletier. Jocelyn Lee Portoes. Ingrid Miriam Roderick. Scarlett Gail Scarborough. Anne Elizabeth Shumbada. Kimberly Marie Tremblay. Patricia Yingchi Wong. 
Nikki Lee Zerbanopoulos. Johnny Allen Alves. Oh, excuse me. Okay. All right. Just one second. Jessica Celia Adams. <laughs> Christina Marie Baraldi. <laughs> Jessica May Barden. <laughs> Deborah Ann Burnham. <laughs> Shayna Lynn Byrne. <laughs> Nicole Marie Campbell. Jessica Lynn Karen. Jennifer Marie Casanova. Jennifer Ann Clancy. Kyle Marie Comins. Melissa Amy Curtin. Alyssa Marie Dunaj. Rachel Fichtenbaum. Luli Rodriguez Dacona Fisher. Shannon Marie Fisher. Catherine Lynn Fleming. Vanessa Catherine Flood. Siobhan Elizabeth Foley. Lee Karen Garrison. Jessica Lee Wilmet. Christina Lee Hamill. Elizabeth Ann Hammond. Julia Irene Hazel. Amanda Jean Herr. Michelle Lee Incropera. Deepa Kamal Jumani. Lauren Amy Coy. Alice Margaret Cothy. Laura Stephanie Levine. Julie Rose Lindquist. Amy Elizabeth Lisevich. Barbara Rachel Lotto. Stacy Jean Macarell. Ludmila Mayorska. Rebecca Jean Mead. Amy Ford Midell. Rachel Christine Meyer. Laura Jean Miskowski. Elizabeth Marie Mitchell. Sharice Lenore Nader. Perry Ann Normandon. Mary Ellen Janet Olson. Melissa Jean Paskowitz. Rebecca Joan Porter. Sarah Elizabeth Rawls. Victoria Raris. 
Jeannie Elizabeth Roke. Kimberly Ann Skomas. Jessica Bond Sagnini. Ingrid Erica Skoog. Katie Therese Stott. Patrice Aaron Sullivan. Jennifer Marie Talbot. Michelle Martins Valenti. Erica Lynn Vaughn. Catherine Aaron Willett. Summer Ruth Witz. Lindsay Brooke Swart. Sarah Maureen Beenick. Patricia Gail Buntell. Leslie Ann Canton. Nicole Marie Castanguay. Lindsay Rose Clapp. Sarah Diane Clough. Christina Mylin Deer. Erica Marie Desfoe. Ashley Brooke DeStacy. Sabrina Lynn Donahue. Kimberly Annie Ducharme. Megan Lorraine Ellis. Sarah Elizabeth Fahey. Megan Rita Fowler. Christine Marie Frenette. Rebecca Jane Gontars. Stephanie Ann Hartenstein. Lisa Higgins, <laughs> Diane Patricia Jarasitis, Julie Beth Castritas, <laughs> Catherine Barina Panoop, Amanda Elizabeth Krapkowski. Perry Ann LaVita. Leah Kane Lekan. Andrea Ho Wan Lee. Kristen Elizabeth Loisel. Julia Annie Lovett. Melissa Annie Maggio. Erica Marie Mulatto. Kristen Marie Martin. Veronica Nadia McKillop. Crystal Susan Mercogliano. Meredith Lindsay Mingolelli. Margaret Fiddler Maloney. Lindsay Wells Murray. Stacy Marie Nelson. Jennifer Lynn O'Grady. Stephanie Annie O'Shea. Jennifer Marie Pager. Danae Audie Peralt. 
Caitlin Sue Prey. Rebecca Ellen Rowlands. Pamela Elizabeth Scott. Melissa Ellen Siegel. Melissa Annie Shattuck. Kristen Marie Streb. Lisa Marie Tereshko. Jennifer Lynn Valentino. Carlene Lynette Wilkish. Now the boys get their chance. Johnny Allen Alves. Philip Preston O'Coin. John Franklin Barrel. Jonathan James Bertolami. Evan Audie Boudreau. Eric Carl Brownswagger. Scott Timothy Buno. Eric Bruce Byam. Timothy Glenn Scott Callahan. Michael Demeter Kahns. Sean Patrick Carroll. Joshua Abbott Cerullo. Jeffrey Elson Cho. Matthew Mark Coder. Ethan Edward Cushing. Nicholas James Damas. Andrew Michael Deloge. Brian Lawson Dodd. Jeffrey James Druin. Philip James Falado. Andrew Thomas Fleming. Michael Vincent Flynn. Gregory David Frenette. Kevin. Joseph Giacomo, Alan Russell Gates, Elias Umbacus, Paul Michael Goffin, Adam James Hermance, William Chi Hong Ho, Jonathan Christopher Jarak. Eric Brandon Cates, Richard Kenneth III, Brian R. Kinney, Joshua Mark Kotfila, William Paul Criswick, Jeffrey Thomas Langley, Marshall Leonard Lashley, Adam Francis Lavelle. Alvin Michael Lynn. Scott Alexander MacArthur. Christopher Charles McDonald. Jonathan David McDonald. Peter James Musgrave. Robert Anthony Pascucci. Christopher William Pashoni. Robert Allen Reed. Seth Michael Roby. 
Jonathan Kamotek Roy. Daniel Kevin Sylvia. Stephen Christopher Souza. Brad Brett Matthew Stevenson. Daniel Joseph Sullivan. Timothy Mark Swizzerbin. Matthew Michael Talalas. Adam Joseph Tebolt. Martin Leon Van Buren. Daniel Brent Warshawski. Matthew Robert West. Andrew Chian Yang. Jason Joseph Almloff. Jonathan Richard Ames. Matthew Paul Bessonen. Jeremy Nathaniel Brown. Kenneth Curden Chandonnet. Scott Douglas Chipman. Eric Michael Klein. Ryan John Cody. Michael David Cruikshank. Ian Wesley Day Lewis. Peter George Francis Delmore. James Michael Densmore. Craig Andrew Donaldson. Nicholas Paul Doty. Donald Philip Salem Elias. Benjamin Richard Frassa. Patrick Michael Friel. Matthew Joseph Gagnon. Thomas Joseph Gano. Christopher James Gotti. Patrick Francis Gilbride. Eric Paul Gobeil. Christopher William Higgins. Stephen John Keating. Stephen James Kotsias. David Joseph Lantain. Gregory Norman Lyons. Nathan Ross McKinnon. Brian Michael McGuire. Jason Peter McGowan. Matthew Mark Mendonza. John Patrick Murray. Daniel Charles Nash. Kyle Andrew Nicodemus. Robert Edward O'Donnell. Patrick Emmett O'Shaughnessy. Stephen Joseph Patno. Michael Thomas Regna. Jeffrey Adam Sox. Matthew Sean Souza. Tom Van Tron. Mikal Dan Tringali. David DiGermo Valencia. Michael John Weinbeck. Michael James Whalen. Benjamin Arthur Williams. Jeffrey Whalen Wilson. Joshua Michael Worcester. Samuel David Adamson. Marco Charles Aluya. Matthew Paul Aronian.
Ready for Barrett? Barrett? Yeah. William Allen Barrett. Christopher Allen Benton. Christopher Bianchi. Andrew Ralph Boschetto. William Michael Bunker. Christopher Lewis Burns. Andrew Colin Cahill. Herbert Gen Z Chow. Matthew Drew Chiris. Daniel Joseph Cohen. Joshua Timothy Conti. Charles Robert Curran. Michael Vincent Curtin. Patrick Burke Daly. Colin Patrick Davis. Ryan Michael Dawson. Brendan Donald Donahue. Brian James Dunn. Brian B. Farley. Matthew Nicholas Flynn. Matthew Paul Gagnon. John Howland. Gardner III. Daniel Joseph Gothier. Kevin Richard Goff. Brian A. Green. Michael Frederick Hall. Joshua Levi Hunt. Brandon John Kelly. Matthew Robert Kilroy. Daniel J. Kachufas, Thomas Wilson Lagrange, Robert Cameron Lane, Ian Thomas La Riviere, William Robert McTy Jr., Kevin Lee Maderos. Haskell Isaac Isaac Aronson Mermel <laughs> Michael Yates Nabo Gotham Nath Sashin Nene Orion Andres Perez David N. Picard. Gregory Adam Rawls. Joseph David Reddy. Stephen Michael Rashad. Scott Edward Robbins. Adam Joseph Roberts. William Howard Ryder. Jonathan James Silva. David Andrew Sims. Paul John Spurrier, Jr. Ethan Grant Steele. P. 
Peter Joseph Sylvain. Matthew Daniel Thorin. Ryan Eugene Torre. Michael John Vesnuski. Timothy John Welch. Charles Paul Wellman. Brian Michael Williams. Christopher Francis Wong. Ryan Joseph Yanaro. Chengi Shou. And now the president of the first class of the new century, the class of 2000, Sui Michael Yu. Class of 2000, please turn your tassels. It is my pleasure to present to you the graduate class of 2000, the millennial class. <laughs> 